Hello, this demonstration is uh, to show you how to generate multiple regression results using Excel. I've got a very simple data set here, and uh, the data set is uh, for um, a music group uh, that uh, would want to do some, some estimation of uh, you know, uh, the relationship between uh, the gross revenue they will earn um, from, uh, you know, from performing um, with uh, the television advertising and newspaper advertising. So, so basically those are very basic, um, you know, independent variables, uh, television advertising and newspaper advertising. And uh, the independent variable is going to be the gross revenue. So we want to see if uh, the, uh, you know, these independent variables are strong predictors of the dependent variable, the gross revenue. Okay, so uh, in order to generate uh, the multiple regression results in Excel, first of all, you have to go into the tab, the data tab. And when you are there, you should be able to see data analysis um, option available under analysis group here. Now, if it doesn't show up on your computer, it means that uh, the, the function has not been added in. So all you have to do is you go to File, and under File, you'll see Options, right? And that's uh, right at the bottom there. Click on it, and then uh, you have a dialog box that shows up, which uh, prompts you for Add-ins. So all you have to do is click on Add-in, and once you've done that, uh, in the middle of your screen, there will be some changes that will uh, include Manage Excel Add-ins. And in there, all you have to do is click on Go, right? You must make sure that it's actually saying Excel Add-ins. By default, it will be saying that. And then all you have to do is click on Go. And then it opens up a smaller dialog box here. Uh, so the reason why you could see data analysis on my screen is because I've got a check mark on Analysis tool pack. Right, that must be activated, that must be added in in order for us to see the data analysis function available on our screen. So in this case, it's already selected. Otherwise, once you put a check mark on it, just go ahead and say okay, and uh, you should be able to see data analysis. And just a reminder again, this is only available if you are under the data tab, right? You won't be able to see it if you're under home, insert, right it won't be showing up there you have to make sure that you are under data okay now that we've done uh, all the housekeeping uh, activities we, it's time for us to click on data analysis itself to activate the dialog box that will give us all the analysis tools that we need to do statistical functions now in this particular case we want to look for regression that's what we want right because remember we want to do multiple regression so click on regression and then OK, it opens up yet another dialog box, which is actually the working dialog box where we are actually going to now specify um, the things that we want to do. It begins by asking us to input the dependent variable, which is input Y. So we have to select the range of our dependent variable. In this case, what we are trying to predict is the gross revenue Please note that I've selected including the column heading. That label is actually included there as well. So that is also going to show up on our output. And then now uh, we click on the input X range, which is our independent variables. In this particular case, we didn't select both of them. We've got only two here. So we select both of them. And once again, including the labels there as well. Then we must put a check mark on levels to show that the very first row are actual levels, it's not actual data. And by default, our confidence level will be 95%, so we don't have to do anything about that. And then we now make the final decision as to where do we want our results to be placed when they are actually generated. Right. So in many cases, you could put it on the same page, which is what I'm actually going to do in this particular case but you can as well put them on a separate uh, worksheet or you can put it you know, in a separate book, a workbook, right, which is another file, 
for that matter. So you have a lot of options available, but in this, in this case, I want that to be on the same page so that I can do a visual inspection of the data should there be something that is a little bit suspicious or something that I want to emphasize on. But again, feel free to place uh, the output wherever you want. Uh, it's a question of preference, really. Okay, so once you've selected the output range, make sure that your pointer is inside this box. Because if it's not, anything you're going to do is likely to change uh, the input X range, that's, which was the last activity that you did in a box, right? So always pay attention to that. So now here I can say, I want my results to begin in F2 thereabout. So the very first uh, output should begin there, then it can extend across or downwards and so forth. Once we've done that, we're actually ready to go. We are ready now to generate uh, the results. We want to see them. All we have to do is just say, okay, and uh, before you know it, they've all been generated. And uh, now we can do a right fit. You can see here I'm actually using columns uh, to select so that I can do a right fit between the very last column that's actually selected and the one that's not. And if I place my pointer in between the column letter headings, double click, it does a right fit, which means that it's actually expanded the columns large enough that we can read the information in there. So it's a right fit. Uh, I want to be able to read everything that's in there. So expands it enough so that I'm able to see everything. Otherwise, the alternative would be for you to do one column at a time. Many people tend to do that, but uh, that's a little bit slower. Uh, so what I've just shown you is actually a shortcut. Now that we've done this, we need to do a little bit of cleanup. What you'll observe is that Excel duplicates lower 95% and upper 95%. You can see the last four columns there, they are actually duplicated. So I only need one set. I don't need a duplicate. So I can delete the last two columns because I still have the other two. Then delete. Okay, so now it's time for us to do a quick interpretation of these results. Okay, so uh, we, we begin by looking at the regression statistics here, um, where we are actually able to see that the multiple R, which is the strength, which it measures the strength of the relationship between the two independent variables and that dependent variable. So the strength is actually at about 96.5%, right? It's a very strong uh, relationship right so it's simply measuring the strength of the relationship so it's very close to one at 96 point 96.5 percent or 96.6 percent right whereas the r square it's actually measuring uh, how much of the revenue is being explained by the two independent variables right so in other words Television advertising and newspaper advertising are explaining about 93% of the variation in the gross revenue. And that's pretty high, right, by any standard. Okay, so, uh, so that's actually the, that's the coefficient of determination. It's actually telling us that we can explain 93.2% of for what is happening to the gross revenue using these two variables. So which means that uh, there's another 7% uh, that too is not explained residual in this particular case. And so therefore it could be another var a variable, maybe popularity of the, of the group, you know, and things like that. Okay, or maybe location or venue, etc., etc. So again, uh, but at least here we've actually been able to explain enough. Uh, that's pretty high explanation. Now adjusted R square is simply saying that it's still R square but adjusted for the sample size, right? So we always want to be conservative when we're making some estimations so that we do not overestimate anything. So as a general rule, a scientific research recommends that uh, you use the adjusted R square, the more conservative R square rather than the original R square. 
Otherwise, the Senate here is simply telling us about the how spread out the data is, the data dispersion, and the observations. It's actually the sample size. So now we can see here, and in the, the next section, ANOVA analysis of variance, that the collective, um, the collective relationship between the two independent variables and, and the independent variable is actually statistically significant. It is actually statistically significant because we can see that this number here, significance F, is actually less than 0 0.05, as we can see that is actually true. So all the two relationships, all the two relations of the independent variables with the gross revenue put together, they are statistically significant, right? So that's a very good starting point. Now, many would actually argue that analysis of variance, even for other statistical tools like SPSS, SAS, etc., they, they always begin with the regression statistics, but uh, the actual foundational calculations of our regression output is actually done here. So many actually still argue that ANOVA should come first. Why is that actually significant? Now you'll find that the numbers that you're actually is seeing here, they were actually generated using these numbers down there. For example, the R square uh, equals sign. So the R square is actually made up of the sum of square regression divided by the total sum of squares. You see, you can see it's exactly the same number. Then that number is then adjusted for, um, adjusted, uh, for the simple size right there. So it does make sense uh, to look at it that way. And also the significance F, it's actually calculated based on the, uh, on the F test. And that F test is actually derived from the mean square divided by the residual square. You can see that's how that number is actually derived. And then it's actually this number that is then used to calculate uh, the significance. Um, uh, the significance F. So the F test is the one then that's actually used to calculate the significance F. So you can see that uh, ANOVA is actually the foundational uh, calculation. It goes to the diagram, measures uh, the distance of uh, the data points uh, from the mean, and then square that, and then add up everything. Then you come up with the sum of square for the regression, sum of square of the residual, sum of square of the total then you find the mean of that, right? As you can see here, this, this, uh, the mean squares are actually mean squares of the sum of squares right there. Okay, so again, that's a, a discussion for another day, but just wanted to throw in that argument uh, that is doing the rounds in this, uh, within the scientific community that why don't we have analysis of variance at the top uh, before we move to the regression statistics. Now finally, the final section that you tend to find, it's always the last one there. That's where we can actually evaluate the p-value, the probability value, so that we can evaluate whether the independent variables individually are statistically significant um, when measured against the dependent variable right there. Now we can see television advertising is actually statistically significant. Again, that number, it's lower than 0 0.05 because it's only 0 0.02. And uh, also the newspaper advertising is statistically uh, significant as well. Right, okay, it's uh, again, it's lower than 0 0.05. So both independent variables are statistically significant. Now, what else do we need to, to do here is just to quickly take a look at the coefficients. The coefficients, what do they actually tell us here? Uh, it's actually telling us that the television advertising for every increase uh, in one unit of a dollar spent on advertising, the gross revenue increases by about $22, right? Okay. Well, well, in this case, um, let's see here, this is, um, again, it's always important to pay attention uh, the unit that's actually being used uh, right there, okay? It's always important to pay attention to the unit. Because in some cases, the number could actually be in thousands, so it's always important to read this correctly. But otherwise, 
every change in one unit of our television advertising, uh, tw um, the gross revenue changes by 22.4, and uh, newspaper advertising, uh, every change in the unit of our newspaper advertising, again, the gross revenue will change by about 19.5. Okay, but uh, what is also important is also to consider this coefficient within the context of the lower and the upper. So again, going back to television advertising, it means that uh, the change in the television unit, uh, television advertising unit, right, will be 22.4, but can be as low as 4.15, or can be as high as 40.65. The same is true for the newspaper advertising, that it can be, even though the average is 19.5, eh, the lowest could be eh, 9.99, or can be as high as 29.0. So again, the coefficients that you see here are actually the average they are, they are the averages of the lower and upper. Is that actually true? We can double check that right away. Equal sign, double click on this. We want to find the average of these two, right? We can see 22.4. And if we copy that formula down there, these two numbers, you can see they actually match those two numbers as well. So again, this is a much more detailed interpretation or for multiple regression, because uh, in most cases, all you're looking at really is you're looking at the strength of the relationship, you're looking at the coefficient of determination, how much of the, of the variation is being explained, and then beyond that, you just look at the uh, statistical significance collectively and also individually, right? So usually, once you've actually been able to explain those, you have completed the interpretation of your regression analysis. But I just wanted you to go a step further so that you can appreciate the numbers a little bit more, right? Because rarely do we have to talk about the sum of squares or the mean of squares, because they're just um, work in progress or they're the working papers of the rest of the statistics that are actually generated here. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. I hope you found uh, this video very helpful and detailed, and uh, hopefully it uh, sets a very strong foundation for you that enables you to take more interest in uh, an, uh, understanding uh, regression analysis. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, uh, be sure to share this with uh, your friends uh, so that they can become comfortable as well so that you can all benefit. Thank you so much and bye for now.